All right, this will be a different sort of video than my usual ones. I'm going to show you a software I really like called Material Maker. Now I want to be making a few uh, materials, just generic trims for a electrical panel. Um, so I figured that's a good thing to show. I can show in a, a couple of different use cases and examples. Um, but basics are, we're working with black and white data and using that to it, it be reinterpreted as a PVR, as a texture for something in 3D. Um, so let's dive into it. I'm going to right click and add a brick node because I just want to make a single panel of electrical stuff and uh, bricks are great for showing what I'm talking about here with the black and white. Anything white and black can be used to interpret how the surface is interpreted by like a renderer. So I can take this brick pattern and pass it to a normal map node and pass that to the normal input and suddenly that brick is pretending to be depth pretending that the sur that light is interpreting being interpreted on the surface as there being depth even though there's not and as I change these bricks it's in real time pretending that there's different surface normal data uh, there's different surface angles to be reflected on so we're going to take advantage of this to make some convincing vents so that's what I'm going to work on right now is some panel vents um, so I don't really need bricks I actually just wanted a single square but it's got some handy controls for beveling and uh, mortar. And if I decide later on I want to add multiple uh, vents or panels, like even just adding that look could look really good, making it look like a subdivided panel. And I may end up doing that. So I'm going to build this out of bricks just to save myself time later on. So right now we just have a beveled edge. Nothing fancy. Now what I'm going to do now is add some of these vents. Now it's all black and white data and it's all math. So that's what we're going to make all this with. In order to start with it with these in order to make these vent slats, I need to make an individual slat and then I'll just tile that to make a whole bunch of them. So let's get a shape in here. Whoop, not a circle. Let's do a polygon here. Um, and to show you what I'm looking at, polygon. So you can give it as many sides as you want. I'm just going to do a four-sided polygon obviously for a square. Shrink this down a bit. I'm going to use a mirror node to stretch this along the horizontal line. And I don't want just square slats, I want them to be slightly angled the way that punched in slat vents are. So um, I can do this in a couple of ways, but I think what I'll do is I'll take this mirrored output, pass it to a transform, and I will scale the uh, X, I think I'll do, is what it will be. Um, but not, you know, I don't want to just simply scale it, I want to scale it as it goes down the map, as it goes down this sheet. So I'm going to use a gradient angled 90 degrees, so it's progressively getting darker going down. And I'm going to feed that as input into this scale on the x axis. So as it's going down, it is scaling the x, the left and right, the horizontal, um, more as it gets more white, because black is no and white is yes. So don't scale, don't scale, don't scale. Yes, start scaling and scale full blast. That's what's happening here. So as this gets more and more black, it scales more, more and more. So by adjusting these toggles now, I can control how much it's uh, scaling this slat. Kind of neat. Um, so that's looking actually OK. I think I want to slat about like that. It's looking pretty good. Um, other options, if I didn't want to do it this more complex way, I, you could have just taken something like this mirror node and tied it into a uh, shear node and sheared it a little bit. I would have had to offset what is center here a little bit, but this probably would have also looked pretty good for event slat. But I'm going to go for this, and it showed you a little bit more of how the math works. So anyway, lots of options. Um, so anyway, now I've got this slatted uh, indentation. But the thing is, I don't want it to simply perforate the panel. I don't want to simply just punch out holes. Um, generally, on these sort of panels, they're cut. You know, there's the actually. I guess that I want this inverted, don't I? I want this the other way. I think I want it to be wide on the bottom, narrow on top. Uh, but anyway, they're usually punched on one side, and then the, the metal is bent. So what I need is to um, gradiently color this to match that sort of look. I'm going to add another gradient, rotate it 90 degrees, and I'll tie that into the, well, this scale's already fine. I guess I can tie that over here just as color. 
Um, this is all black and white data, so I'm just going to use a math node. Math doesn't do color, but it can do black and white. And so to keep processing simple, I'm just going to multiply A times B. So A is this shape, B is this gradient. I'm going to multiply those together so that as this, there we go. So again, if this is a perforation, it is totally perforated at the whitest, and it's not perforated at all at the black. It's going to look more like it was bent, like bent metal. So now we have a single perforated and bent metal slat. Now I need a whole bunch of them because we need to fill up the whole panel, right? There's a node called the Tyler node, which is perfect for this sort of a thing. It tiles whatever you feed it. I'm going to turn off all the randomness because I don't want anything random really going on here. I want this to be very mechanical. Um, and I need a whole bunch. I think I want it to be... Four is pretty good, but I think I'll do five. And just give it a little bit more room. Let me make that a little smaller. There we go. Yeah, that's that's a lot of vents. That looks starting to look like a vent. Um, this is kind of too big. I'm going to scale down the whole thing with another transform node. So that once I tie it in with these bricks, it's not maxing out the whole shape. So here we go. We need to blend in to this brick shape these vent perforations. Um, so I'll drag this out to a blend node. And there are so many options for blending. If I were to connect this directly, it's going to just mix them 50%, you know, it's going to be 50% my original brick and 50% the perforations, which is not really what I want. That's not going to look good when, if I were to pass this output out. It's just going to look kind of bad. Um, so what I want to do is think about it for a sec. I've got a bunch of white data and I've got a bunch of white data. White is one. So I sub should subtract this white data from this white data. Subtract these ones from these ones. I'm going to change this to blending style difference then and crank this up. And I'm going to scale this down maybe like to 80%. And so now it looks more like perforations and that bending of metal like I mentioned before that it's punching out these holes. And in 3D that should look about that way too. Like yeah, like the metal was punched and bent forward. And if I were to pass this data out to color as well, it's going to look not too bad. I should probably uh, colorize this. It's not completely black to white. Instead, make it like black to kind of gray. Maybe I won't even go fully black. We'll go like slightly. So that way it looks like light is still getting in there. So just like that, we've got now a kind of basic vent where it looks like there's been perforations made in the material. Now to make this look even better, <coughs> we should, uh, make it look like metal for real. So all this was mostly just shapes. Now I'm going to want to make the uh, the textures. I'm going to bundle all this up, all this shape data for making these slats. I'm going to go tools, create group, and name this uh, slats or something. So now all that data is bundled up in a single node. If I need it, I can double click it and see it again. But now it's kind of out of my way. Now I just have the bricks and the slats and the blend much easier to keep track of stuff. Um, so for a panel like this, I want to add edge wear to make it look cooler. So for these bricks, I want to distort the way this uh, edge looks. So we're going to pass this out to a node called the uh, slope filter. And it is good at distorting stuff, but it needs some input to know how to distort. Uh, I'm going to use noise data here and feed that into its second input and you can see immediately it takes this information and scrambles it using the noise. This scrambling is not good looking. It needs to be scaled up So I because I just need the noise to be more scaled up and more granular like edge wear would be. So let's kick this up to 8 by 8 kick up some iterations and kick up some per, uh, persistence, and that'll give me some nice grainy looking grain, which immediately makes this distortion more grainy too. I can fine tune this using this dial to decide how much uh, edge wear I want. You can hold the Alt key to control that more granularly. And now let's go ahead and add that edge wear back in. I'm going to add another input into this blend and tie in 
at Edgeware. And um, this data is black and white. This data is black and white. To get this extra wear, I could probably use just a multiply. Any, that way, anything that is black here will start blackening out any white here. So now we have, as you can see, just a little bit of edge wear around the corners, which is being interpreted here as a little bit of scuffage and indentation as well, which is looking pretty good. Um, metal like this also tends to get scraped, so I'm going to add some scrapes. There's a scratches node for that sort of thing. They start off very curly, so I'm going to turn off the waviness, turn down the layers, turn down the width. I want these to be little hairline scratches. And that's uh, not too bad. If it's not to your liking, go ahead and turn up the randomness, hit the shuffle button until you get something you like. Um, and I'm going to tie in that with another input. Connect that here. And now this is white on black data. And this is white data. This uh, you know, background is white. So I'm going to have to subtract my new white data from the old white data. So I'm going to use the difference instead this time. And the scratches might be too uh, visible. You can kind of see. In fact, here, let me, uh, let me make these wider so you can see what I'm talking about. They're kind of too visible. So I'm going to turn this difference down, down, down until they're like very faint. I'll make them thin again. And that should look a little bit better. Maybe even lower. I want those like barely visible. Yeah, maybe another layer though. I think it'd be barely visible, but I want more of them than that. Uh, maybe even just shortening them with fewer layers. Let's see. I need to see what I'm doing here. That's kind of too many. That's not bad. I kind of like that. All right, so now we've got some scratches. We've got some edge wear. We can do some bigger dings by taking advantage of our noise even further. Let me make some room. Um, this noise is already good noise. We'll just reuse it again. I'm going to clamp it. Let's bring out one more of these and colorize. And I can, uh, by sliding these, choose how much black and white gets shown. Um, I'm going to only show a tiny bit of black pox. And I'll add that in here. Let's blend in these pox. Um, since this is black, uh, white data with black indentations, I can multiply that to add that extra data in. And you can see, maybe if I turn off the guides, you can see that now there are these little like uh, pox. And if I go to 3D view, you'll see that noise now showing through in little pox. And I, by scrolling this left and right, I can control how strong those are. Um, and I guess with that, metal isn't always perfect. It's got a little bit of texture to it, so I will actually add, again, another one of the, this noise directly in now. And that's way too much, for sure. I'm going to change this to multiply. And uh, just turn it down, like way, way down, just enough, just barely kicking it on. Let me hold Alt, barely kicking it on enough to give this metal the slightest warble of uneven texture. And now we've got ourselves some pretty good looking uh, vintage. Now let's start tinkering with the final PBR stuff. I know this video has gone a little bit longer than I wanted, so we'll go quick now. Um, we obviously need this to be metal, because it's a metal vent, so I can crank that to full blast. I don't really need to show things that aren't, uh, tell it what's not metal. Um, I could, and it would probably be just this, uh, these slats aren't metal, really. Well, I guess they're metal. No, they're still, they're, they're still metal, so I'll just leave them. It's all metal, so I'll just leave metal at full blast. Um, roughness. Let's go ahead and bring out a colorize node here and determine how much of this should be shiny and how much of this should be uh, rough. Right now it's opposite of what I want because, again, white is yes and black is no, so it's saying that um, all this white is rough when really it's metal. All that should be shiny, so it should be the opposite. We'll invert this. Now that is way too shiny, so we'll turn this black one a little bit more grayish, just gray hewing, like, hey, you're just a little bit shiny metal. And uh, that's still too shiny for me. There we go. I want more like a, yeah, like a cheaper, crappier <laughs> metal. 
not so shiny, not mirror sheen. That's looking pretty good. Um, and this albedo that we had before up here is just a bit too dark for me now that we're starting to see it, now that the material itself is showing the details. So I'm gonna lighten this out a little bit. Looking pretty good. Um, and what else can we do? Ambient occlusion, you can actually tie that in pretty quick. They've got a handy node for that. Um, there's one called HBOA, which I really like. Yeah, HBAO kind of interprets the high and low for you again, a little bit like the normal map does, and gives you um, kind of like a, its estimation, its calculation of what is high and what is low. You can adjust the angles and uh, the depth of where it's looking to kind of interpret where shadows should be, the quality and the intensity of it. And um, so I can just use this about like that, feed that into ambient occlusion, and that's going to really make those uh, vents get darker even. And sometimes it's fun to tie in this shadow data into the uh, into the color data. Um, there's some fun things too. You can do a whole bunch of fun stuff with this where like if we added like bolts or something or even if we wanted like uh, some sort of smearing coming out of these slats we could do something like a directional blur uh, going down. Turn that way down single direction so it's only going down and if we were to tie that into the color yeah, let's multiply blend with a multiply into here and feed that out so what this is going to do is going to smear in some darkness below these uh each one of these slats so you can kind of see now it's looking like there's darkness pouring out the bottom um, that's a fun idea uh, it's making it too dark because it's also doing the border edge I'd probably want to do something like just this slat data here, uh, and not directional blur it, or not with not multiplier because it's going to do all of it bad. Let's do difference. There we go, and not so hot. There we go. So there we go. So now we have like <laughs> dust or or whatever. It's it's dark and dirtier coming out the bottom of those vents. Things like that, lots of fun stuff. Or we could have done that with rust, if it, you know, bolts. If this was a moisture, like a vent on a on an AC unit or something, but you can kind of see how that came together. And then if I wanted to, you know, we could we could always add another column and split up this uh, this vent panel into multiple sections and and really run with it. But that's all I'm going to show for now. We made a metal vent and uh, gave it some textures, and it looks kind of metal like. These still aren't, I didn't mess with colors or do anything fancy, but uh, you know, we could have, we could have changed any one of these colors to change the output, uh, the look, but I just wanted to show loosely the most basic core of this. And hopefully that uh, helps people get started making interesting materials. And this is infinitely texturable, so we could put this on like, you know, any shape and it's gonna look all right. We put on something entirely flat. You know, this is what we've made, metal flat panels. Cool, cool, cool. All right, take care, everybody.